is the natural world really in crisis? Well, in one sense, no. If we look at the return of nature to disaster zones like Chernobyl, then clearly nature is resilient and you know, humans have very little long-term impact. But of course, the natural world is something we rely on. So yes, the world is in crisis because humans rely on natural resources. We rely on the natural environment to sustain us. And clearly there are issues of ongoing trouble there. Yeah, I think humans have, have always had an impact on the natural world and whether it's always been a negative impact can be debated. I think what's happened in more recent times, and by that I probably mean since the Industrial Revolution, is it's the scale and it's the speed of how humans encroach into the non-human world. Uh, so it's the amount of space that's taken up for housing, it's the extraction of resources, um, including our use of water, that the human impact on the non-human world just seems to have got bigger and gets faster as the years go by. Um, yes. When we look at the fossil records from since life, there is evidence of, of life on Earth, we can see five clear extinction events and the last one uh, happened about uh, 60 million years ago and is the one that wiped out the dinosaurs because of the environmental effects of an asteroid. So looking at these records, we also know that it's normal, it's natural, that one in every million species will go extinct. What we see now is an average of uh, something between 10 and 100 times this level of extinction. So we have about 8 million species living today, uh, animals and, and plants, and 1 million of them are threatened with extinction. So more recently, since the 1970s, we have the Living Planet Index by WWF um, with very reliable information about the decline of species of plants and animals. And that shows a decline of uh, 68% since 1970 to 2016. That's the, the records we have. So we can safely say that there is a sixth mass extinction event happening now. And that is not being caused by anything from outside the planet, but very much caused by our destruction of forests, our impact on uh, natural environments because of pollution, because of climate change, and uh, because of uh, bringing species that should not be there um, to compete or to, to uh, interact with native species, and because of over-exploitation of wildlife and of parts of wildlife for different uses. So all of this contributes to extinction. We can also say that uh, we are the cause then. We are the asteroid now. And if the dinosaurs uh, did not have a choice 60 million years ago, we do. We can make a change. We can change the trend of extinctions and reduce biodiversity loss in several ways. We have to think of our decisions in the way we produce and consume food and energy and uh, put within the economic uh, plans the value of nature, the value of biodiversity. So before thinking of profit, if we think about the planet, um, biodiversity and people will be doing a much better job. The real problem is that human impact on the environment is a form of violence, but unfortunately much of that violence is hidden. When we think about violence, we can think of violence against the person, and it's a very obvious thing, someone being attacked, someone being killed. In the same way, loss of habitat, destruction of hedgerows, forests and so on, are very visible, but often that are a distance from us. We rarely see that individual issues of violence. They're on the telly, but not in our backyard. One of the real problems here is something which is known as slow violence. 
It's the way in which, for example, in human populations, exposure to pollution, to toxic chemicals and so on, can impact on health over a long term. But it's almost invisible. You can't picture it. You can't create images of it. In that sense, it's not really there. In the same way, the crisis in the natural world is an issue of slow violence. The steady, steady loss of species, the incremental loss of habitats, etc., is driven by processes such as economics, politics, um, but are so slow that we really don't see the crisis coming on us in a very similar way to the climate crisis. The context we're living in now um, and the rate of which um, large numbers of animals, particularly mammals, fish, um, the fish in the seas, are decreasing at, at, at incredible speeds such that um, everyday organisms may well be extinct within our lifetime. I and mean, even sitting here, um, the number of damsel flies you would expect around the pond on a day like this would be would be in the tens. We've got we've got a handful. The number of bees on the butterfly on the buttercups near near me, we'd expect again tens. We've got actually none. <laughs> um, and I think that is one of the things that's beginning to happen. It's it's the rate of impact and it's caused an imbalance in a very delicate ecosystem. And ultimately, it's that ecosystem that provides our food, our clean water, it's that ecosystem that cleans our air.